All right, we're going to look at uh, what we call compartment models, uh, where we're actually going to model these systems of differential equations. Uh, this time we'll talk about a tank problem here. So, and you might have done a similar problem in 17b where you had a single tank that had some salt in it and uh, water was flowing in and flushing out the system. Here we have the ability now to uh, check out two tanks, both full of water, salt solutions, okay? Tank one holds 100 gallons, tank two holds 200 gallons. Initially, tank one has uh, some, some salt in it. Initially, it's 40 pounds of salt, and tank two at the beginning has 100 pounds of salt, okay? Um, but that's going to change, all right? So because we're going to flush the system out, we're gonna put in 50 gallons per minute into tank one with pure water, so zero pounds of salt. Okay, now the way this, this is all would have been given here. So um, solution is allowed to flow from tank one to tank two at 40 gallons per minute. Uh, it can flow back from tank two to tank one at 10 gallons per minute. Solution is allowed to leave tank one at 20 gallons per minute and allowed to leave tank two at 30 gallons per minute. So you can tell the total amount Entering the system is 50 gallons per minute, which matches up with how much is the sum total of how much is leaving the system. So we're always going to have the same amount of solution in our system. Okay. Now, what our challenge is, and this is, I, I like this because it really shows how um, understanding some uh, knowledge of linear systems of differential equations can answer a question as complicated as this. There is salt in this tank. There is salt in this tank. It's moved, some of it's moving back and forth. Some of it's leaving from either tank. And our challenge is to write a system of equations that will tell us a precisely how much salt is predicted to be in tank two at some moment in time and how much salt will be in tank one at some moment in time. That's, that's pretty amazing in my opinion. Now, ultimately, we're going to ask the question, what is the long-term effect? How much salt will be in both tank one and tank two over a long period of time? Now we're gonna show this mathematically, but let's use our intuition here. There's a bunch of salt in both tanks at the beginning, but if we're putting pure water into this system, some, at some point this salt's gonna leave here, right? Some of the salt here will leave here. It might go over here, come back, but also there's an opportunity for salt to leave here. And over a long period of time, you can imagine all of the original amount of salt in tank one and tank two would be gone, and it would just be pure water going through the system. So what do I expect to happen to the amount of salt in both tanks over time? I expect them both to go to zero, which would be in indicative of a stable, solution, right? A stable equilibrium of zero, 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 too many zeros there. Okay, now as far as actually doing the math, just like in 17b, we want to look at rate in minus rate out, what's coming into the system and what's coming out. And we just want to keep track of salt. dx1 represents the number of pounds of salt in tank one. So we should acknowledge that there's 50 gallons per minute coming into the system, but none of that is salt, right? We times that by zero pounds per gallon, so we're in units of pounds per minute, but that's gonna come out to be zero. We do have stuff coming in from tank one from tank two, into tank one from tank two. So it's coming in at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. Now I wanna have units of pounds per minute, so how many pounds? Well, it's coming from tank two, and there are X2 pounds of salt in tank two, and it always contains 200 gallons, so I would be multiplying that by X2 over 200. Leaving the system, rate right out, so we have minus, we have 40 gallons per minute going into tank two, and that would be multiplied by the number of pounds of salt in tank one, divided by its volume, which is 100 gallons. Also leaving is 20 gallons per minute, and that would get multiplied by X1 over 100 as well. For tank two, Rate in, let's keep the picture here. 
Rate in is the 40 gallons per minute coming from tank one, so that's multiplied by x1 over 100. And leaving it is 10 gallons per minute times x2 over 100 minus the 30 gallons per minute times x2 over 200. If you get rid of the units now, this boils down to a linear system. Um, 40, uh, where was I? Dx1, yeah. This is a. Uh, Yeah, I put my rate, yeah, okay, I have, I, it's customary to have your x1 terms first, right? Even though we, do, we set it up as rate in minus rate out. When we get to our matrix, we wanna have x1 here and x2 here. So I put the 40 over 100, which is 0.4, and the 20 over 100, which is 0.2, both of those were negative first, plus the stuff coming in, which is 10 over 200, that reduces to 0 0.05. And then for dx2 dt, 0.4x1 minus the sum of these two, so that's 0.05x2 minus 0.15x2. If we combine the like terms there, your matrix is negative 0 0.6, 0 0.05, 0 0.4, negative 0.2. To classify the stability, we can still do the eigenvalues. It's a bit harder. Set up your uh, determinant, set equal to zero, um, I foil it out. I found it was nice to uh, multiply both sides by 10 to move the decimal place over so I wouldn't have to deal with a fraction or a decimal. And that gave me 10 lambda squared plus 8 lambda plus 1. Doesn't factor, so I use the quadratic formula. I get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 40 over 20. And that would give me negative 8 plus or minus root 24 over 20. Even without a calculator, we know root 24 is about 5. So one eigenvalue is negative 8 plus 5-ish over 20, which is clearly negative. The other one is definitely negative. Negative 8 minus the square root of 24 over 20 is negative. So as expected, this is a stable sink. All, even though we put salt in the system, it's all going to disappear and come back to equilibrium at zero, zero. So let's use this as a model. Some of the problems you'll see don't really have any context into them. They just ask you to, okay, so the, uh, maybe I should cover this up here. The, the question was to, if you had this diagram and this system of differential equations to, solve, to figure out what A, B, C, and D would, would come out to be. Okay, so the way to do that, now you have a context. You can imagine these are two tanks with salt flowing back and forth. And so how dx1 dt would have been set up. Now you gotta be a little bit careful. Normally you would do rate in minus rate out, but uh, we wanna have the x1 term first. So it's actually the negative terms first, that's the rate out and the positive is a rate in, okay? Now, if we look at this, let's look at the rate out of tank one. Coming out of tank one is both AX1 and CX1. So that negative 0.4 has to be equal to the negative of the sum of A plus C, okay? We're not gonna be able to solve that because there's two unknowns there. So we wanna table that for a moment and let's go on to the rate in because there's only one thing coming into tank two and that's from X2, that's BX2. So it stands to reason then that your B is equal to 0.3. Okay, we have B. Now if you go to the rate in on tank two, there's only one thing coming into tank two and that's AX1. So that 0.1 must be A. And once you know A and B, we can come back to here, and if A was 0.1, then we know that C must have been 0.3, right, to give us that total of negative 0.4. And then finally for D, the negative 0.5, what stuff leaving tank two must have been the sum of B and D together. So that negative 0.5 must have been B, which we found was 0.3 plus D, the negative of that. So then D must be 0.2 to make that add up. 
Okay, one other question here. This is a little bit of a random, although it is a tank problem. It's a tank question, a, a double compartment model, but not, not in the context of salt in a tank. Okay, we can think of our bodies as a double compartment model in this sense. Suppose a drug is administered in a single dose and that the drug doesn't accumulate in the body, but as we know, your body's gonna process the drug, right? And it makes sense that the body will process the drug, and in other words, convert it to, in this case, they say the urinary tract, get rid of it at a rate proportional to how much is there. So the minute it gets that dose of drug, it's gonna start processing it as quickly as it can. It can, but then as the amount in the body goes down, it's gonna slow down how much it processes it. Okay, so our compartment model lo just looks like this. There's the body, there's the urinary tract, and all we have is the body transferring the drug over to the urinary tract. That's the only thing, but we can still view it as a compartment model. Now our initial value for the drug was 10 milligrams, and we can presume that there's no drug in the urinary tract at the beginning. And we're also told it takes 45 minutes for half of the drug to be processed by the body, to be transferred over. Okay, our, initial, our uh, differential equations will have dBdt equals negative, I just put a constant times b, negative k times b, and du dt is equal to positive k times b. And our goal is now just to really just solve for k. It is possible to, tr to do this like we've been solving this, to turn this into a linear system. And then you have to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors and all of that. But in this case, we don't have to. And the reason why is that top differential equation is a differential equation that we could have solved in 17b. It only involves one variable, b. And in fact, not even solving that, if you, re if you recall, we talked about this in a previous video, a very common differential equation that we're gonna see is that if you see dx dt equals ax, if the rate of change of something is proportional to how much of that something you have, that's always gonna to lead to exponential growth or decay. In this case, since our k is negative, the solution to that system is going to be b is ce to the negative kt. So, and that makes sense. Our drug is going to diminish in the body exponentially. If we plug in our initial condition, B of zero was 10, we can solve for C, C would be 10. And if I plug in the 45 minutes they said it took for the body to process half of the initial amount, so we have five left, plug that in for T, set it equal to five, I can do some algebra here and solve for K. And once I solve for k, the question just asked us to set up the differential equations. I would just put that value in for k.